we have realized that solving the higher order difference equations can involve lengthy calculations and we can get a number of roots depending upon the level of the lag or lead involved in the given difference equations. So when the roots are multiple in number then their nature can also be of a variety that is they can include repeated real roots, distinct real roots and complex roots and their interpretation for the dynamic stability can also be different when it comes to the real roots versus complex roots because in real roots the value of b should be less than 1 in its absolute terms whereas for the complex roots the value of r should be less than 1 so if one of them is indicating uh, that there is dynamic instability and the other indicates that there is dynamic stability then there arises a conflict between the two uh, set of roots therefore we can use some alternative method that will save us from the complexity of finding a number of roots and then resolving uh, if there arises any dispute about the dynamic stability depending upon the variety of their values for that we have a certain theorem which is known as the Scher theorem and it is going to guide us about the convergence of the time paths of the higher order difference equations without solving for the roots because that can be a cumbersome quantitative exercise and at the end the interpretation about the dynamic stability can become confusing so remembering the standard form of a higher order difference equation we remember that it has an nth order and it will have n number of roots which can be complex and lengthy so adopting a easier way which is a qualitative method which is known as the Scher theorem it is qualitative in nature because it doesn't require calculating the quantities of the roots for that difference equation so this is the benefit that it doesn't require the solution in in quantitative terms of the given higher order difference equations in in this process we find the determinants and they are developed and evaluated and then we see the values of their solution the number of the determinants that will be produced in uh, Scherz theorem will be equal to the order of the equation so it is easy to understand that for a second order difference equation we will have two determinants the notation that we use for these determinants of Scherz theorem are delta with subscript of the serial number of the determinant that is the first delta and the second delta the formation of these determinants is specific because in the principal diagonal we have a naught and in the other uh, two places we have a2 so this is a naught this is 0 this is a2 and these are the values that are a1 and these are also a1 so it has a certain pattern that one needs to remember in order to able to apply it in a certain given case of difference equation its value is to be compared with 0 and if both of these or all of these determinants are greater than 0 then we have a convergent case here we have only two determinants so we are referring to these two only but if both of them are negative then definitely we can say that there is a divergent time path and finally if uh, they are appearing in a way that one of them is positive and the other one is negative then neither of these cases will hold it will neither lead to convergent nor divergence now numerical num example number one is there this is the dynamic stability that we want to figure out for this higher or the second order difference equation we are not resorting to the third order 
or fourth order difference equation because when we solve this the determinants will be quite large so we are trying to exemplify this thing simply by using a second order difference equation instead of going for the higher order difference equations that are al also solvable by using the same method for their dynamic stability however their solution can be a little extra lengthy so we are uh, borrowing the values that is a naught a1 a2 and c all these values they are there extracted this c is showing that we have a non homogeneous case however in the shear theorem it doesn't get uh, it doesn't get used so shear theorem has these two determinants delta 1 and delta 2 that are calculated here here we have substituted the values of a1s and a2s and we got this final answer that is delta 1 is less than 0 so the very first determinant already signals that we do not have a dynamic stable dynamically stable difference equations time path because one of the determinant is having a negative answer but still we can find out the value of the second determinant and in this case when we solve it it is equal to zero so it doesn't make much difference because one of the determinants is already less than zero so we have a second determinant which is defying the requirement of the convergence as per the Schur's theorem so we can say that this case is not holding because uh, both of them are not positive neither this instead this one is holding because both of them are not greater than zero one of them is equal to zero whereas the other one is clearly negative here one of them could have been negative positive but neither of them is positive here therefore we can say that the divergent situation is emerging in this case in these lines the same thing is mentioned now we can talk about the second uh, numerical example this is again a second order difference equation we have extracted the values of a0 a1 a2 and c and then we are going to put them into this that is delta 1 delta 1 and delta 2 now uh, the first answer is positive that is 35 over 36 which means that the first determinant is positive we talk about the second determinant it is also positive because it is equal to 49 over 54 so both of the determinants are positive and it fulfills the condition of convergence in the difference equations time path here neither this nor that is applicable because both of the determinants are positive in nature so we have a time path which is convergent in nature now we conclude this topic of Scherz theorem by explaining two of its limitations the first limitation is about the dynamic stability it gets investigated however the characteristic roots are remain unknown because we do not have the information about the characteristic roots as we have not calculated them so this much of ignorance will remain in applying the Scherz theorem secondly it can create very large determinants when we deal with cases where n is greater than 2 because in the last two examples we had second order difference equations and two of the determinants and you can see that the first one was 2 into 2 order and the second one was 4 into 4 order so in case of third order difference equations I can expect uh, a determinant of this order so this can really get difficult therefore we have this limitation of the Scherz theorem that as the order of the difference equation increases it becomes difficult to deal with those determinants that can become huge this is something that we were not expecting this was this is against our expectations of ease because we wanted to avoid calculations however 
this can become a problem if those determinants are of uh, such higher orders however this is another method that can make things simple and can avoid uh, the uh, calculation of the roots and their confusion regarding the dynamic stability and this is known as the Scherz theorem which is used for the judgment of the dynamic stability of higher order difference equations thank you